Hello uh, and welcome to Standard 4 of the Care Certificate Workbooks. My name is Daniel Dutton and I run the website dsdweb.co.uk which provides free help, guidance and support for people that are studying for care qualifications. In this video we will be looking at Standard 4 Equality and Diversity. This standard explores the concepts of equality, diversity, inclusion and discrimination, the underpinning legislation and how discrimination can be challenged. For further information about this standard, visit dsdweb.co.uk by clicking the link in the description. But before we go on, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and like the video by clicking the thumbs up button. I'll give you a moment to do that before moving on. Activity 4.1a. The first question asks you to define the terms equality, diversity, inclusion and discrimination. Equality is ensuring that all individuals have the same opportunities and are treated fairly. Uh, this does not necessarily mean that everybody is being treated the same. For example, a visually impaired individual may not be able to read their gas bill unless it is provided in large text format. To be treated fairly, the gas supplier will be obliged to make a provision that this individual receives their gas bill in large print so that they can have the same opportunity to see how much they need to pay for their gas as individuals with a, without a visual impairment have. Diversity is about acknowledging, respecting, valuing and even celebrating the differences between individuals. By recognising how we are all different, we can make unique contributions and realise our full potential. Inclusion is ensuring that everybody in a group is treated fairly and equitably and they are able to participate and contribute. Discrimination refers to treating individuals unfairly or less favourably because they belong to a certain group or have certain characteristics. This could manifest through prejudice. For example, someone who has been brought up to believe that foreigners are inferior to residents of their own country. Stereotyping. For example, someone believing that all men are good at DIY. And labelling. For example, using the word slow to describe someone with a learning disability. The Equality Act 2010 recognises nine protected char characteristics that, is, that it is unlawful to discriminate against. They are race, age, disability, gender, gender reassignment, pregnancy and maternity, marriage and civil partnership, religion and belief, and sexuality. <coughs> Excuse me. The next question examines the difference between deliberate and inadvertent discrimination. Example one, a community group organises activities in a village hall that does not have access that is suitable for individuals who are wheelchair users. This is probably inadvertent discrimination. The limitations of the facilities used by the community were probably overlooked when the activities were arranged. Example two, in a hospital, a volunteer gives smaller portions of food to women than men because they believe that men have bigger appetites. This is deliberate discrimination. The volunteer is deliberately discriminating against women based on unfounded stereotypes. They are letting their own personal beliefs affect their work practices. Example three, a care home has a policy that limits kitchen hours from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. A new resident observes Ramadan meaning that they can only eat before sunrise and after sunset. As a result of the kitchen policy, they are not able to eat proper meals for the month of Ramadan. Again, this is deliberate discrimination. The care home are discriminating against a new resident by not accommodating for their religious beliefs. Furthermore, they are not promoting person-centred values. Example four, a home care worker stays longer at the home of an individual than they should because they are fond of the individual which means that the next person has less time for their care and support. Again, this is deliberate discrimination. The worker is discriminating against their next client because they are not keeping to their schedule due to their own personal preferences. This results in them not treating all their clients fairly and equally.
Question 4.1c asks you to explain how practices that support equality and diversity, such as working in a person-centred way, can help to reduce workplace discrimination. This question can be approached in many ways. You may want to look at the way in which new clients are assessed within your organisation and how their protected characteristics are taken into account during this process, or how your organisation regularly invites feedback about equality and diversity. Having a robust policy about what to do if discrimination is experienced in the workplace and how it can be challenged can help reduce the likelihood of it happening, as can effective training in this area. The next question asks you to identify, identify legislation and codes of practice or conduct that relate to equality and diversity. Of course, there is the Equality Act 2010, which makes it unlawful to discriminate against protected, protected characteristics, uh, and the Human Rights Act 1998, which identifies a set of liberties and freedoms that every person in the UK can expect, including the right to life and the right to start a family. The Mental Capacity Act 2005 provides a framework for ensuring that individuals with limited capacity are still able to exercise choice and control in their lives, as well as protecting their rights. The Health and Social Care Act 2012 and the Care Act 2014 underpin all work done with vulnerable adults and ensures that they are empowered to remain as independent as possible and have choice and control over their lives. Finally, the Code of Conduct for Healthcare Support Workers and Adult Social Care Workers in England requires workers in these jobs, roles, to uphold and promote equality, diversity and inclusion. Activity 4.2c asks you to take a look at a couple of scenarios and explain how you may address the discrimination to encourage positive change. The first scenario describes an individual that is unable to reach the counter in order to pay for their shopping. In the first instance, you may speak to the person on the counter or their manager to explain the situation and discuss a solution for future visits. If you need to, you may escalate this to the head office or follow their complaints procedure, being sure to remind them of their obligations under the Equality Act 2010. The second scenario involves a colleague who refuses to work with an individual because of their sexual orientation. In this case, you may want to challenge them yourself or report it to your manager. They may not understand why this is discriminatory practice and need to have it explained to them or may need to undergo additional training. If the discrimination continues, it may need to be addressed using dis disciplinary action. There are several sources of information that you may use to expand your knowledge of equality and diversity. This includes your manager or a more senior or experienced colleague and your organisation's policies and procedures. Knowledge can also be gained through training and supervision, as well as your own research and by looking at the underpinning legislation in more detail. The final question asks you to complete the table to identify when and where you would look for additional information in situations relating to equality and diversity, as well as whom you may speak to. The first situation is that you have identified a learning need to expand your knowledge about dementia to support an individual's communication needs. This is something you will need to discuss with your manager, either informally when you see them next or formally during your supervision or appraisal. You may also want to look into training options by conducting research and speaking to training providers. The second situation is left for you to fill in yourself. For my example, I described a visually impaired individual who is unable to use a communal computer in a residential home. The individual is being discriminated against because they do not have the same opportunity to use the computer as the other re residents that do not have a visual impairment. I would look into hardware and software solutions that would allow the individual to use the computer, such as a screen reader or a magnifier, and speak to people with expertise in the field before presenting the options to my manager. And we've come to the end of this standard. Thank you for watching and I hope you find it useful. If you require any additional help or want to send feedback about this video, please feel free to use the comment section below or visit my website dsdweb.co.uk. The link in the description will take you to more detailed answers for this standard. And if you haven't already done so, 
please click the like and subscribe buttons below. By doing so, you'll be the first to know about any new videos that I create. Thank you for watching and until next time, goodbye.